So recently I've seen some iPad content saying that the iPad has kind of stopped innovating or that there's something missing with the iPad or, you know, the iPad is kind of stuck in limbo. But in my opinion, I beg to actually differ and I actually think the iPad is shaping up to have its strongest year in 2024 from both a hardware and software perspective. So what I want to do is talk about the state of the iPad, primarily focusing on the iPad Pro behind me, but also talking about the rest of the iPad lineup, which is probably the most confusing part of it all. So, so without further ado, let's talk about the state of the iPad and what to expect in 2024 from it because, like I said, I think it's going to be a great year for us iPad users. Let's get into it. <music> So right now in 2023, the iPad can be looked at as being a little bit confusing because a lot of people to this day still don't know how to fully use it or how they want to use it, right? To some people, it's just a throw around content consumption machine. To some other people, it could be just an iPad that you give to your child to entertain them so they're not kind of being loud and rambunctious. But to others, it can be a laptop once you attach the magic keyboard. To others, it's a design tool. To others, it's a digital note-taking pad that they use to kind of do their math problems in high school and in college. So depending on who you are, this confusion could be the actual superpower of the iPad Pro, which is actually not confusion, it's actually the versatility of what you get from such an amazing product. And I can tell you firsthand as an iPad first user, now I'm not an iPad only user because you can see that I have an M2 MacBook Air behind me, but as an iPad Pro first user that I've been using the iPad Pro as my main machine since 2018, I've seen it evolve over the years from both a software and a harder perspective where it's little by little, it can be whatever the actual user wants it to be, right? And a lot of people have been stating that there is a lack of innovation, that the iPad has kind of relatively stayed the same. And again, if you take a positive shed to that light, it's because in 2018 when the iPad Pro came out, it was leaps and bounds ahead of any other tablet in the market because at that point it could have been a full-fledged computer from a software standpoint. And then you had the A12X, which was powerful enough to run kind of the most intensive tasks that you can throw at it at the time back in 2018. And that is part of the reason why, at least from a looks and form factor standpoint, it stayed relatively the same. There has been no need to innovate from a hardware standpoint. We've gotten better spec updates. Obviously, we have the M2 iPad Pro now with the mini LED display and the LiDAR scanner and the two camera sensors on the rear. So from a form factor standpoint, yes, it's still the same footprint, but we have iterated on that hardware little by little. And again, you cannot expect the iPad to completely change year over year because people are getting used to it and people want it to actually remain similar. So it's not just a completely different departure from what it was the year before and that is why i think the ipad pro is set up to have an amazing 2024. so to quickly recap the ipad pro and people saying that it has that lack of innovation in my opinion it is the most innovative computer out in the market because of that versatility that it brings right when it first released in 2010 or 2011 steve jobs came out and he wanted just a pane of glass that was like 9 to 11 inches in terms of screen real estate and it was created to be able to read maybe an ebook or maybe kind of read your email maybe watch a youtube video it wasn't meant to be a full-on computer and as the years went on we're now only 12 years out of that original release it is now a full-fledged computer when you want it to be it is a digital note-taking tool when you want it to be it is a gaming console when you want it to be and everything in between you can do things as small as just take a couple notes and then as big as kind of edit 4k video or render video games and be able to code in swift ui and it is amazing how far the ipad pro has come so when people say that it hasn't innovated in the last few years i think they're just stuck on the fact that it looks relatively the same which is totally fine i mean look at the laptop form factor for instance they looked exactly the same for years if you look at what samsung is doing in the tablet market their tablets look exactly the same and they have for years as well and i barely even want to bring up google because they barely dip their toes and they kind of get out of the water when it comes to the tablet game and then jump back in with something else completely different so apple for the last 10 12 years has totally monopolized at least here in the u.s what a tablet is because most people nowadays instead of calling it a tablet they're calling everything an ipad whether it is an apple product or not and then you also have the idea of the modular ecosystem that apple's brought over to the ipad pro which is being able to use a magic keyboard when you need to and creating a laptop type of environment but then removing it and all of a sudden you have this ultra thin beautiful piece of hardware that's able to do pretty much all of that stuff that you would do on a laptop but with your finger as a main form of interaction with the ipad itself and then you have the Apple Pencil, which yes, again, the Apple Pencil 2 has been around for five years, but it's because what are you gonna do to it to make it better, right? Maybe add a shutter button or an eraser like on the back end of it, but also change for the sake of change is where people get in trouble and companies start to get in trouble because they get away from what exactly made it work in the very beginning. So at the end of the day, the iPad in general, not even the iPad Pro, but all iPads, they're the most versatile devices on the market or versatile computers on the market to this day. Even if you go down to the iPad 10th generation, you can get the Folio keyboard and then all of a sudden even that is kind of like a Chromebook-esque or even a laptop-esque type of environment and ecosystem and experience. And then you have the iPad mini, which is probably the truest iPad because it is only a touch-first interface. It doesn't have any additional keyboard accessories. You can use your Apple Pencil with it. So 
it kind of fits in your purse or a bag. It's perfect for those people that actually just want a pure tablet. Then you have the iPad Air lineup, which has the M1 and gives you Stage Manager. Then you have the iPad Pro lineup on the 11 and 12.9 inch. So there's something for everybody in the iPad lineup. It, there is a lot of overlap and Apple does this on purpose to make sure that you get exactly what you need out of your iPad and you have multiple options to make a decision on. But overall, the iPad is what the user makes of it, which is whatever you want it to be, which is something that not a lot of laptops and other computers can say. And then lastly, I do want to address the software conversation, right? iPadOS has been iterating since it kind of broke away with iPadOS 13, with iOS 13. And when that happened, I thought it was going to be an absolute game changer, and it really was. A lot of people who don't use their iPad as their computer first are going to say that, hey, the iPad Pro or iPad OS hasn't changed at all, and it's still kind of like a watered-down OS. It's still basically a large iPod Touch or a large iPhone, and it's not really Mac OS. Absolutely, it is not Mac OS, and it will never be Mac OS, right? There's, I don't think there's a future where Apple kind of ports Mac OS onto the iPad Pro or vice versa. It's kind of work in conjunction with all of your other Apple ecosystem devices, like your iOS device, your Mac OS device, your Watch OS device, and whatever the case may be. So iPad OS has evolved over the years, and only the people that are using it on a day-to-day -day basis and really take advantage of all those features are seeing the differences kind of come to light and their workflows are getting easier. For example, Stage Manager being able to have the floating windows in iPad OS 16, but then being iteratively better in iPad OS 17 by having more variability with the floating windows. It feels a little bit more like Mac OS. It feels a little bit more fluid, a little bit more familiar. All those little things begin to come together, and it feels like a completely different operating system that really can work to your benefit as a computer and not just a tablet. So the software situation, yes, it's not macOS, and like I mentioned again, it is never going to be macOS. For the, so for those people that aren't going to be happy until the iPad Pro runs macOS, then leave the iPad Pro and leave the iPad OS kind of situation to the people that enjoy iPad OS like myself and some other people that I know for a fact love their iPad and their iPad Pro. So now I quickly want to look forward to 2024 and what to expect from the iPad because the iPad will be going through some changes even from a form factor standpoint. But again, it's not going to be a crazy leaps and bound visual change. Apple's going to make the bezels a little bit smaller. They're going to extend the screen from 12.9 to 13 inches on the iPad Pro. They're going to add probably an OLED display. So the hardware upgrades are going to be, yes, they're going to be there on paper and it's going to be a better experience overall. But again, the iPad Pro isn't going to get a hinge to start folding. The iPad Pro isn't going to be a 20 inch tablet. The iPad Pro isn't going to be made out of like ceramic versus aluminum or anything else, right? iPad Pro phone factor, if it ain't broke, don't fix it because it's been working for years and years. And Apple's just going to iterate on iPad OS 18, make the hardware just a little bit better to make sure it's in 2024 standards and see where everything falls from there. We will be getting some new iPad Airs, including a new larger iPad Air Plus, I believe it's going to be called, to kind of scratch that itch of the people that don't want all the kind of high-end bells and whistles of the iPad Pro, but want the larger 12.9-inch display that will ideally still work with the Magic Keyboard. And then speaking of that Magic Keyboard, Apple is set to release a new Magic Keyboard after four years. Apparently it's gonna have some aluminum in there. And it's gonna be made to look a little bit more like an actual Mac laptop as opposed to kind of what it is right now, which is the Magic Keyboard for the iPad Pro. But let's see what Apple does when it comes to iPad Pro hardware, the accessories. There's also a rumor of an Apple Pencil 3 coming out, which is gonna be a little bit different from the Apple Pencil 2, but also different from the USB-C Apple Pencil. All things to see and kind of stay tuned for, because in Q1 of next year is when I believe most of this stuff is gonna happen. So definitely stay subscribed, be on the lookout for some iPad Pro content. I'm a big fan of it. And let me know with a comment down below. Are you guys iPad users? What is your perfect iPad situation? Which iPad do you have if you do have one? And how do you use your iPad? Is it a supplemental device to your current workflow? Is it purely just for content consumption and maybe the occasional game on the couch? Or is it a revenue generating machine or a productivity machine like it is for myself? Because an iPad Pro is an absolute beast. But if you guys made it to the end, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so I know you made it to the end. And if you guys want to watch more iPad OS, Mac OS, or iOS content, click on one of these right here. And like I mentioned, save subscribe because we got a lot of awesome stuff coming in in the beginning of the new year. But until next time, I'm Fernando, and I'm out of here, everybody. Peace.